Come on, Debo. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Shifty's 49ers Talk. It's your boy Shifty coming at you with another one. Today, of course, we are going to be talking about the massive, massive news with regards to the 49ers that all pro wide back Debo Samuel has officially requested a trade away from the San Francisco 49ers, which is just so hard to believe. Man, I can't believe I'm saying those words. I'm absolutely shocked, stunned, and certainly not in a good way. Um, to me, Debo Samuel is arguably the most valuable offensive player in the entire National Football League. And for sure on the 49ers, people might argue George Kittle, but I'm going with Debo as the most valuable guy on the offense. So, you know... Really, the news came out like pretty early today, I think early afternoon, morning time, and uh, I didn't want to make a video immediately. I kind of wanted my thoughts, feelings on this matter to kind of settle a little bit. Um, I have watched a number of videos from different content creators and, you know, picking up their thoughts on it was really interesting and some of the people's takes was fascinating. But for me, I wanted to just take some time before I put out a video on my thoughts on the entire situation. Um, I'm going to try not to ramble too much because I definitely have a tendency to do that. I'm going to try and keep it coherent and um, we're really going to talk about, you know, just the facts, what we know, and then possibly going forward, going to speculate, you know, what could happen. And maybe we'll talk a little bit about why we think that Debo wants to be traded because it's still a little bit, a uh, little bit foggy. Not many people know the ins and outs of this. So um, without further ado, let's just get into it. Let's give a little bit of a background as to who Debo Samuel is as a player. I'm sure most of you watching this video will already know a lot about Debo Samuel, but just in case we have some more casual fans who just maybe want a little background. Um, second round pick in 2019 out of South Carolina to the 49ers, 36th overall. Um, his first couple of years in the league, he definitely showed potential, showed promise, especially his rookie year in 2019. Um, a lot of times with receivers, it takes him a little while to get acclimated to the NFL game. Um, Debo Samuel showed almost immediately why he was chosen in the second round. There were a number of big games, number of big plays. Um, not only that did he show his ability as a receiver, but he did also show that in somewhat in 2019 that he was able to be like a running back of sorts uh, somewhat effectively. We saw that great touchdown against the Panthers where you know, it was a great play call. Debo just cuts right through the middle of the line, takes it in for the touchdown and does that famous little touchdown right a uh, little celebration right there but overall really solid uh, rookie year 2020 a uh, little bit lackluster he did miss about half of the season with injury of course the Niners were just ravaged by injuries that year quarterbacks coming in and out with Garoppolo playing hurt and missing time Mullins Bethard it was just kind of a mess so 2020 is a bit of a write-off I think for most of the 49er players but last year, Debo Samuel exploded onto the scene. You know, again, as Niner fans, we saw what he could do. But really, now the NFL is, of course, very much aware of the player that in caliber of player that Debo Samuel is. Uh, all pro player, Pro Bowl, of course, as well. Uh, he had 1,770 total yards in the regular season, 14 touchdowns. And here are some really crazy things. Averaged 18.2 yards per catch, which led the NFL. But not only that, he ran the ball 59 times, 6.2 yards per carry, which is ridiculous. It's, you know, if you're averaging over four and a half yards per carry, you're doing pretty darn well. Five yards, you're doing very well. But 6.2, that's just, that's wild to think about. Not only that, he does it all. And to prove that point... Remember that touchdown pass week 18 to get into the playoffs? He threw a touchdown pass as well. So truly a do-it-all kind of guy. So with Debo, we just know he's just a fantastic player. And like I'd said a little bit earlier in the video, he is, to me, the most valuable guy, offensive player, potentially in the NFL. But on the 49ers, again, people might say Kittle, people might say someone else. But I do think that Debo is the most valuable valuable and best offensive weapon uh, potentially in the NFL. The question now that is on everyone's mind is 
why is Debo requesting a trade right now? It does seem like an odd time to do it. Um, he's coming off an all-pro year. He's been on a team for the last three years that have appeared in a Super Bowl, in an NFC Championship game, which a lot of players haven't been to either. So he's seen a lot of success in his time in San Francisco, not only team success, but individual success. Like I'd mentioned, coming off an all-pro year. So why is he requesting a trade? And this is a team, the 49ers, are definitely set up for long-term success. There's no reason why the Niners can't be as competitive or even more competitive next year. So why does he want to leave? Well, the consensus seems to be that he doesn't like the way he's being used. Now, Debo earlier today did put out in a now-deleted tweet that only he knows, the 49ers know, and his agent know why he wants to leave. But the consensus seems to be that doesn't like the way he's being used which is for sure a little bit odd because initially he seemed to embrace that wide back position and you know it's a very unique position and not many guys can do it as well as Debo did it um yeah so it's a little bit odd that he would now kind of seemingly go against wanting to do that going forward now it's interesting because when you look at the draft prospects, and I've been doing a lot of draft, you know, watching a lot of prospects, different guys, and I'm watching, you know, content creators, you know, put out their thoughts uh, on the upcoming draft. And so many players are like, they can play that Debo Samuel role, Debo Samuel role. Um, so it's interesting now that he's like, I don't want to be that guy. Um, the only thing situation like this that I can remember where it seems like a player, you know, and potentially their peak is saying, I don't want to play it that way, um, is actually also somewhat related to the Shanahan's, and that would be RG3, where he was basically saying, I'm not going to be a running quarterback. Seemed like long-term that maybe the Shanahan's were right. You know, that was an aspect of RG3's game that was really effective. And of course, with you know going back to Debo, being able to run the ball and being able to catch the ball and throw it a little bit is where all his value comes from. So it's odd that, you know, of course he wants to get paid, although... Seems like the 49ers very much willing to pay Debo Samuel. So, but Debo's the one who hasn't really entered into those contract negotiations. So, it's really hard to you know gather like why he wouldn't want to embrace the role. Now, the one thing that you could say is that well, maybe being a running back, being a wide back, wide receiver, maybe his career wouldn't be as long if he's as if he just played wide receiver. Um, so, if we look at his touches for last year overall. Debo Samuel had 136 touches in the regular season. Um, but I actually looked at that number compared to like every other NFL player. So he actually ranked 47th in the NFL in touches. So that's receptions and rushes in the NFL. Um, overall, number one was Najee Harris, who had 381 touches. So we're talking about 250 touches more than what Debo had. Even on the 49ers, Elijah Mitchell, who only played in 11 games, he had 226 touches, which is 90 touches more than Debo Samuel. So although Debo's getting quite a lot of touches, actually when you take out uh, running backs out of the equation, he was number two in the NFL in touches behind Cooper Cup. So when you factor in wide receivers, running uh, tight ends, and quarterbacks, Debo was number two. A little bit odd, though, because you would think he knows how good he is, and he is incredibly talented. So you think that he would want the ball more often than not. Um, and he, we famously saw in that playoff game at the Cowboys, where he's like, just give me the ball. The Niners give him the ball, he scores a touchdown. Um, so I don't know if usage is really, I mean, clearly he, that's what we're kind of hearing, but I just don't know. Maybe there's something else going on, but it's really weird because there's never been an ounce of uh, reports or anything that Debo Samuel hasn't got along with the coaching staff. Um, there hasn't been really anything uh, like drama or anything like that going on in the 49ers organization of lately. I mean, we signed George Kittle to a long-term deal. We signed Fred Warner to a long-term deal. We signed Trent Williams to a long-term deal. Use check. All these guys who, if the culture in San Francisco wasn't right, they wouldn't come back. Um, not only that, I mean, you look at a player that we did trade away who is a phenomenal player, DeForest Buckner. He didn't want to be traded. He wanted to stay in San Francisco just, you know, with cap space and all that stuff. We couldn't make it work. Look one step further, too, even with the coaching staff, D'Amico Ryans, he could have easily went to a second head coaching interview with the Minnesota Vikings. He says, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay in San Francisco for at least one more year. I want to come back to the 49ers. And, you know, some of it was also to improve his own coaching ability, I think. But, you know, why would he come back to a situation if the culture wasn't right? So 
it's just really, really bizarre. I don't get it. Um, please leave comments in the comment section about what your thoughts on this are because I just can't wrap my head around it. The Niners seemingly want to pay him a lot of money. And look, I hear this on Twitter, and I'm no cap expert, but Jimmy Garoppolo has actually nothing to do with Debo Samuel from a contract perspective. I just don't see how that's the case. Where I read a number of cap experts or guys who would be much, much more knowledgeable on the cap than I probably ever will be said, if we extend Debo, his cap hit might actually be reduced in 2022. So, you know, I just don't see how Jimmy Garoppolo's contract affects it. It doesn't. Um, now, maybe people throw out the argument where Debo maybe likes playing with Garoppolo. Maybe he has concerns about the development of Trey Lance, which is possible. But Debo Samuel had some of his biggest plays from Trey Lance. When we look at when Trey Lance stepped in against the Seahawks, you know, of course, Debo you know, found himself wide open. Trey Lance hit him. Huge touchdown. We also look at the play, of course, against the Texans, where, you know, the play action from Trey Lance just throws a dart like 40, 50 yards down the field, and Debo runs it in for a touchdown. So, I mean, maybe he does have concerns behind the scenes, and he doesn't want to say that. Um, but I just don't know if that's the case, because he had some phenomenal games with Trey Lance at quarterback. So it's really, really bizarre. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this whole situation. Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I just don't necessarily buy the whole usage thing because he's not being used nearly as much as other guys. Um, 47th in the NFL. So I don't know. Um, what I am going to do now, though, is next I'm going to move on to if we do trade Debo, what might a trade look like with who, what are we getting in return? So let's get into that. So the trade possibilities, where could Debo Samuel get traded to? Um, here's the thing. He's still on his rookie deal, so he definitely has no no trade clause, so he can't really pick and choose where he goes to. So it's an interesting play here as well when you think about it from Debo that if we sent him off to, and you know, no disrespect to these franchises, but the Jets or the Texans, it's like you're going from a competing team in the Super Bowl, NFC Championship game, to teams that in the recent years have struggled a lot. Um, but what could a trade look like and who could we trade him to? Now, I think ideally we would not trade him within the NFC, um, especially I see you know teams like the Packers and the Cowboys are interested. I mean... Why would we trade him there unless they give us a ridiculous offer? Why would we trade him there? Because they're teams that are incredibly competitive who where he would thrive. And of course, that could come at the expense of the 49ers. So I think the AFC is a much more likely destination. And honestly, I think there's a lot of the better options are going to be in the AFC. So the first one, and I saw this, and actually I saw some of these um, you know, different content creators there's CG Ruthless. One of these are going to be inspired by a mock draft you did, so shout out to you. And then some other uh, things on social media, on Twitter that I'd seen as potential trades, but ones that I completely agree with. So to me, could they trade him to the Titans for A.J. Brown? Now that's an interesting trade right there. If I'm being 100% honest and transparent, I remember watching that 2019 draft in the second round I wanted us to draft A.J. Brown. We drafted Debo. And now, I think for this offense, what we do, Debo is probably maybe a little bit of a better fit. But I still really like A.J. Brown. So that's a trade that I could absolutely get on board with. You know, would that happen? Could it happen? Maybe. Although here's the thing. That's another wrinkle to this is that A.J. Brown and Debo actually shared the same agent. So... Who knows if that could happen, but that's one that I could potentially see happening. And of course, I do think A.J. Brown would thrive in this offense, as would Debo in Tennessee. The next one is actually with two of the teams I mentioned earlier. One is with the New York Jets. So who would we get in return if we gave them Debo Samuel? Now, I think a lot of fans are clamoring for that, you know, maybe that 10th overall pick. I doubt we're not going to get the fourth overall pick for Debo, but a trade that I could see happening is we get wide receiver Elijah Moore in return. He was a second round pick out of Ole Miss last year and someone who I really liked in the draft last year. Um, solid rookie year and definitely has potential to do Debo-like things. Um, and then on top of that, I would want pick 35 and 38. And that's what the Jets were actually willing to give up for Tyreek Hill among potentially some other picks too. But I would go to the Jets and say, Elijah Moore, pick 35, 38. That way we get a receiver back who I think is 
younger than Debo, but has still a ton of potential. Um, we get two picks where we could maybe shore up the safety position. Maybe we get like a Jalen Petrie. Maybe we get another wide receiver. Christian Watson could be right there. Um, one of my favorite guys in the draft is Traylon Burks, who would probably be gone at this point, but maybe we package those picks and move up for a wide receiver. Or else we go Jalen Petrie and we get Christian Watson and Elijah Moore. Maybe everyone's happy. So Although the wrinkle to that is if we did trade him to the Jets, I don't know how happy Debo would be. I mean, not that the 49ers are like, hey, if you're demanding a trade, we're just going to, you know, agree to your demands. But going to a team that's struggled, to say the least, recently, plus who has an offensive coordinator that just came from San Francisco. So, you know, maybe he'd be like, oh, you're going to use me the same way as the 49ers. I'm not super happy about that. Um but that could be a potential trade. The last one, and this is the one that I saw my boy CG Ruthless put out there was trading him to the Texans. And maybe we get Brandon Cooks in return, who's a solid receiver about to be, I think he's like 29, 30 years old, making big money. So we would definitely want some other things in return. And what I would want in return is the 13th overall pick, maybe a later round pick too. But hey, if we can get Brandon Cooks, and pick number 13, maybe to me, I would be more than happy to draft, let's say, Traylon Burks right there. I would draft Tyler Linderbaum. I would draft, there's a bunch of different directions we could go. Maybe with the 13th pick, we move down, accumulate more picks like later first, second rounds, and we can fill safety, wide receiver, offensive line. There's a lot of different directions we could go in with that. So that's another really interesting trade scenario. Again, I don't believe that Debo will be traded within the NFC, especially not to competitive teams like the Packers or the Cowboys. Don't see that happening. And of course, we're not going to trade him within the division. So um, I think these are some, there are three teams that, you know, can afford it. Um, they have draft capital and it makes sense. You know, these teams, like especially like the Jets and the Texans, you know, teams that are really rebuilding. And so Debo Samuel, he's only 26 years old. So he'll still be in the prime or peak of his career for at least another five or six years, you'd have to think. So that could be interesting. So those are my thoughts on potential trades. Um, I'd love to hear yeah, your guys' thoughts, of course, in the comments about whether you think, you know, why Debo wants to get traded, what the trade compensation could be for Debo Samuel. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, with all of this being said, I do hope that we can figure it out. I do hope that we can bring back Debo Samuel. You know, he is maybe, along actually with George Kittle and Trent Williams, they're maybe my favorite players to watch on the 49ers. They're just so talented, so explosive, just incredible. You know, when the ball's in their hands, Debo's hands, he does things that no other guy can do. So I do hope that a resolution we can come to a resolution with Debo and we can bring him back, sign him to a long-term deal and everyone's happy. I don't know if that's the case, but maybe it is. If we remember a couple of years ago, Raheem Mostert demanded a trade after his big playoffs, we ended up working out a deal for him. So I would like to think that we can come up to the same conclusion with Debo, but who knows? This NFL offseason has been absolutely wild. I mean, who would have thought that Wilson, Devontae Adams, you know, Matt Ryan, all these guys getting traded, Tyreek Hill, who would have thought that would have happened just a matter of months ago? So, yep, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Of course, more draft content coming up pretty soon. And I'm going to say two things. The butt counts. And I'll catch you all on the flip side.